Hey, everybody, welcome to episode 137 of the Bono Podcast, where we talk all things Blood Bowl. Jingle. Welcome back. I'm Ben, and once again, I'm joined by Blood Tide Ben. BT returns. How are you doing? Hello, doing very well, thank you. I'm very busy, though. Very, very busy. Yeah, uh, Ben will be doing his standard Ben thing of painting uh, while talking, um, and then we can do a little counter of how many times he licks his brush. Uh, just for you people out there who commission him, uh, you find out how much blood, sweat, tear, and saliva goes into your models. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> there go the orders. <laughs> brush time. <laughs> <laughs> and also returning, we've got Miltonio Banderas. Milton, how are you doing today? You are right? I'm doing good, thanks, Ben. Uh, we're much not... better than last time. Good. We're not joined by Trips. Trips is travelling for work, but hopefully we will have him back uh, on next episode when, guys, I think we're expecting gnomes to be dropping in the next couple of weeks. Is that is that about right? Seems to be. I hope so. I um... hope so. Um, I think someone said uh, that the there's there's a podcast, one of the other podcasts, I think it's both down, and said like, hoo, 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 you're going to want to listen to the episode on the 6th of uh, 6th of April because it's an interesting one, which therefore leads us to believe that that would be either the pre-order date in line with, uh, like, um, I mean, Milton, do you watch Guerrilla Miniatures games at all ever? I know you're kind of on a... Mm, not really anymore. Um he tends to drop his videos now on the pre-order day as opposed to like the um, release okay. day. So it could be the pre-order day of the 6th of April. It could be the release day of the 6th of April. But what that does mean is that in the next few weeks, we'll be able to absolutely start crushing it and delving deep into gnomes and also other star players. For example, Rodney Roachbait and the horrifically dangerous to the game, Jordel, which leads me to the next point, BT. What are we talking about on 137? Well, we're going to be talking about those very broken aspects of the game, um, but we're also going to be touching on something a little bit lighter, which is a tournament I went to last weekend and also the Fumble League that we've got going on. Yeah, we're going to touch in on Milton's Fumble League. It is Milton's Fumble League. He's done a brilliant job running it. 20 coaches, I think, Milton, is that right? Yeah. 20 yes, or so right. coaches from the Discord are cramming it in, and uh, it's 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 a ton of fun um, for everybody other than you, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> and your overpowered armbar troll. Uh, we will talk about that, though. <laughs> mm, yeah, I recorded a Theory Thursday today about hiring and firing players, and I used your troll as an example <laughs> of when <laughs> you might want to consider uh, not taking a random or maybe firing um, someone who has a random skill. Uh, so we've got, the Fumble yeah, we've got the Fumble League to talk about. We've got BT's last tournament, which was called Beast with a Four. Yes. There you yes. go. I like that. But the first thing we're going to jump into is the fact that Gnomes and Jordel Fresh Breeze are coming soon and tournaments out there have already banned them. So with Ben being a prolific tournament goer and Milton being a very prolific tournament organiser, I thought it'd be worth having a little discussion about the right way potentially to deal with new releases. So, okay, so this week, um, I mean, I'm not going to lie, like we would, the way Games Workshop kind of does things, right? Historically, we've seen is boom, here's a preview of the next team, and then on the following Monday you get a star player, and then maybe they take a week off, and then the following Monday you get a new star player, and it's normally to do with the spike. So I was sitting at sitting at home thinking, hmm, right, okay, I reckon today I'm gonna have a, a nice little bit of breaking news video, a new star player release. We can find out what one of the other gnome releases is gonna be, um, and then they drop Jordel Fresh Breeze, which was quite the plot twist. So, thoughts on Jordel Fresh Breeze, the model, Milton. What do you think? Uh, um, it's a lot, isn't it? I think, you know, we've had some comments about this on the Discord. I think there are aspects of it that are really cool, and there are others that maybe not. His face is extraordinary. Um, <laughs> For those of you tuning in here, I think we're seeing Milton's parenting skills in full use. I imagine he's going to be exhausted for the next two days of the politeness and positive feedback that was that was that was very good. I'm impressed, Milton. He's, he's got some very cool trainers. Uh, 
a cool like chainmail sleeve. Um, I think from the waist up, he is just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right actually the top and the bottom don't really look like they connect do they <laughs> i understand there's a lot of work and hard work like you know hard work and effort that goes into making mm. these models but my word that chain mail is straight out of 1998 and that face something happened okay i don't know the, if it's the painting or so well, yeah. i kind of like the chain mail for that reason it <laughs> looks like somebody's say, hand sculpted it like, the, like the literally gone in with it looks like old school blood bowl stuff like mm. and jordel used to have that so i think that's probably like the chain mail and the spike it that looks like third edition like that looks like um it would go really well with green skin feels like old orc team like <laughs> it just it just it just works right from that point of view um there are definitely, uh, I think, you know, to paraphrase Milton, um, they tried really hard with this. Uh, I think might be the right way to go. So for those of you but... listening by audio, we've got the Jordel miniature. Uh, he is on one foot, as is appropriate. He is spinning around. He's got his other foot out. It looks like a ballerina pose. He's got his, honestly, Varag Gulchua fist up in the air. Um, he's got some very cool sneakers on, Jordel Air, which I love. You've got some spin in war dance bits, and then you have uh, a face worthy of a Bretonian miniature. <laughs> the, the, the bit that threw me, though, is his hair is two braids, right? But from this angle in the photo, it looks like they're tied underneath his chin. Are they chin. not tied? No. Oh, it does look tied. <laughs> they're, like, they're separate, like flowing. Ooh. One of them's like behind wow. one of his arms, and one of them's in front of his face. But from that angle, it's possibly like like partly the, the the angle of the photo that's like not helping this because it does look like for some reason he's tied his hair underneath his chin oh one thing it really does notice look like that. from the article is they normally do like a little picture with several pictures in like boxed in mm. with different shots and different angles and different views which i tend to i, I think feel like fill the model out really well uh normally but that's missing from this article which is a shame because i think i think i'm hoping that it is perspective that makes some of the bits like for example uh you guys watch rick and morty haven't you mm -hmm. Detective baby yeah. legs um yeah this because his legs seem a little bit shorter which is why i think maybe the top and the bottom half of his body don't look particularly connected like they are a proportion aren't they it, it yeah. looks like yeah, it looks yeah. like the top half is from like a, a hungry troll team and the bottom half is from games workshop which is like quite uh, no, like really miniatures or, or succubus or something like basically a team that Frick would buy uh, with the legs of a Games Workshop model. Um, the, the the only other comment I would have about it is I just uh, the Wood Elf Blood Bowl team doesn't really look like he fits in with them. Other than the colours, but the the actual design aspects are definitely, as you said, the more sort of old school but they're all wearing like jumpsuits even the war dancers have like leggings and yeah i don't think that's too uncommon though like a lot of the stars are stylistically quite different like if you think of like scylla they do i feel like scylla is like yeah. of a different route. design that's league and... yeah i agree with ben i think they missed a trick not putting gigantic socks on the entire corn team yeah <laughs> oh that would have been great <laughs> that would have been great for like christmas teams and stuff <laughs> um yeah, I mean, he is a war dancer, and he's a very famous war dancer. And the model, I'm hoping, is a perspective thing. To, to your point, Milton, it looks like his mid-rift bit, his belt. His, yeah, know. his belt's a little bit similar to the to the others. Uh, there are there are definitely aspects of it, but it's it's enough that it makes it look quite different. Again, though, despite the pers perspective, which I think is probably the issue with what we're seeing. The paint job's great. The basing is superb. Like BT, I'm going to need you to help me out to figure out how they do this basing because at the moment it just it just looks really good. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm looking at mine. And I'm like, man, eh, it's just you know. I mean, I admit I spend no time on my models, but I'm like, okay, I need some uh, I need some pro advice with that, that short grass. Sand of multiple grains. They probably got some sand and then some like grout or something mixed in of like tiny grain. They put that all over. They add some bits of slate in. And then the tufts look like I don't think they're GW tufts. I think they make their own with like one mil static grass, um, and then put that on. Yeah, maybe that's what I need to look into doing then. Because I know you've made tufts before, haven't you? Because you like yeah, yeah. sold them to Ian in a suspicious baggie. Yeah, 
Um, no, I'm equal to Tufts. <laughs> all great. the Tufts. Um, yeah, interesting. I mean, I was not expecting to see Jordel. Uh, the big question for you guys, I mean, Ben, is this going to be one of the star players in the known release? Because we've been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of comments on our videos saying yeah. like, oh, what if gnomes get Elven Kingdom stars? So there is another team that can actually use some of the Elven Kingdom stars that don't get used. For example, the Swift Twins with a stunty team. That would be a reason to buy the Swift Twins. What do you think? I can't see it. I don't see any connection between gnomes and elves. They're just like thematic wise. Child elves, elves, aren't they? I mean, oh, child uh, elves. <laughs> I mean, there's, there is, there is, from a lore point of view, I can see them being foresty people and therefore having access to foresty stuff. Because, like, well, they've, they've got, got the two treemen, tree haven't they? Yeah. yeah, exactly. They've got treemen. Then that's, that's like the halfling thimble cup, isn't it? That exists for that. Uh, yeah, but the point is that yeah. there is a blend there between a, a treeman being in wood elves and um, mm. Willow Rosebark being an elven kingdom star. They also have magic oh, use, true. right? With like the tricksters. Yeah. The the ball the ball stealing. So maybe. In, yeah, I, yeah. It would be. I think it'd be interesting. I think it would shake it up. Because, yeah, those elf stars don't get any use. <laughs> no. So they'll be nice. If, <laughs> well, if, they've, they've done it for a sales tactic, just to try and yeah. shift some of those models. Yeah. And they could also take Gretchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I would love that. I, I, I don't... I think I'm with Ben. I think I'm too much of a nihilist um, to, to hope that that would be the case. But I think that would be really interesting if they don't give them old world classic, they just give them... Um, Halfling, Hobbiton, and then the Elven Kingdoms ones. That'd be really interesting. <laughs> it would just be wicked yeah. to be like, here's my Zote with my gnomes. Uh, like, that would lead to some very interesting tournament builds. I think probably not, but like, that would just be, oh, just Jordel with gnomes would be stupid because his rules, his rules aren't bad, are they? Movement eight, strength three, edge. One plus, um, sidestep, block, dodge, leap, uh, and he's got a special power, swift as the breeze. Once per game, Jordel can choose to pass a single dodge, leap, or rush test on a two plus, regardless of modifiers. Which I think is not game breaking, but it is going to be useful, I think, at least once a game. And 250k, very expensive for elves. I mean, Ben, you just ran a tournament team with elves would you know yeah. jordel is obviously good he's inarguably a powerful star player but is he even remotely for affordable for an elven team no and like the, the thing with elves is like on every elf team there's a player who already kind of does this like you you never really you never really unlock something new with the elf stars because the elves are already so good like yeah he does you know he could cage dive pretty well but then you're giving up so much to do yeah. that. And to get 11 plus him <laughs> is like, yeah. This, there might be some weird tournament rule sets that include stars in your roster, which you can uh, probably fit them in. Milton, sound um, ball. Here we go. <laughs> but, that, would be, that would be fun. Yeah, so like stuff like that I could see because he is just a better catcher. But um, yeah, no, he's, he's I mean, far too expensive. What if he? What if he actually just can straight up be taken by uh, Thimble Cup? <laughs> yeah, I mean that would that would actually be really interesting. Um, because yeah, on every stunty team you'd want this guy. So, are you going with Hackflem? Are you going with Hackflem Junior? Are you going with Griff? Or are you going with Jordel? Like, here we go. Yeah, here's your. I want to watch Flem. Yeah. Mm, so, blodge step and an auto leap on two plus uh, once per game with Edge one plus. He is a superstar in Blood Bowl, but like you said, Ben, he's pretty much priced himself out of the game. Um, but if he's available for gnomes, that would be cool. Very powerful. Probably not. Mm. I mean, Ben, we're going to be falling into the same trap that we've seen um, with Griff in a, in a mid-range team, right? I mean, Milton, you, you're a roster lord. Like, you know that if someone takes Griff, they're leaving out a quarter of their proper team if they're running a proper team, right? Yeah, you're losing a lot just to take that one player. Which gives it a nice trade-off factor. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where it should be. I'm, no, I'm no. happy with where it's at. Um, but yeah, it does mean that a lot of those stars are just never going to see the table. Yeah, and uh, talking of stars that will see the table, old Rodney Roaches. Mill, I didn't get a chance to get your opinion on this lad as we yeah, uh, as he cool, dropped last he? time. Uh, and Pat, what are, you, what are your thoughts? I don't know, we talked about gnomes with you on the podcast, actually. We didn't, no. No, I'm really excited about the gnomes. I, I think they're really cool. I um, I think we... Well, I personally think we needed another stunty team um, just to kind of give stunty... Well, it gives you more options for like, t like play. So the first thing that I jumped to was a, a while back we played a stunty... A stunty league at the local club and uh, included in some teams like yeah. skinks and all the others but i did find that it was quite like restrictive in terms of what you could run you know there was only a handful and obviously you ended up with a lot of repeats and it's just it's just fun fun elements to the game like that i think gnome's going to bring another dynamic um yeah it'll be really interesting to see how they play out but the, the miniatures and the sculpts look fantastic from what we've seen so far i, I can't wait to see them in person now, Ben and... Bed is chomping at the bit to get his hands on them because I think he's probably already got some pre-orders. Uh, I have. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to join the queue, brushtie.com. We're taking pre-orders for gnomes. Um, I've included two trees speculatively, but um, if you do, because we haven't confirmed Ooh. it's one or two yet. Mm. So if it, if you do order two trees and um, it turns out there's only one on the roster, then I'll just refund the tree. So. The article said there was two. There was a, an, yeah, an article. Yeah, said. yeah, there was yeah. there was two. Oh well, there. there you go then. Let's have two trees. It is. Yeah, but I can't remember whether you discussed that though with the trees because they look like a different kit. Do we it think they're going to come in the kit. box? It is a different kit. At first, I thought that it was just the old kit with extra parts because I was like, oh, yeah. Cool. Well, that's what I thought. I thought they were just going to give you like extra bits in the in the gnome, gnome box. box. Build to... out a gnome tree. Yeah. How cool would that be? But if you look at the tree, it's actually in a different. Uh, it's, it's it's different. So it looks like. Mm, well, you've made me doubt myself now. Uh, well, yeah. I don't. I, that was the first look... thing I jumped to. As I looked at it, I was like, I thought its body and everything. The only thing that was slightly different was the face, which has got the face guard thing that you can swap in and out, and the like middle of the mouth. Or whatever I don't think you'll be in the box because they showed the like team roster thing, like the team mm. photo doesn't include yeah. them, and there's 14 models, which is already on the upper end. Like teams usually have 12 yeah. or 14, right? Yeah. So how many is in the snotling box? Well, you get the, the trouble with the snotling box is you get two big guys basically with the pump wagons, don't you? Yeah, and snotlings are half models, really, even to like stunties. I think mm. the feet are different to the other tree man. Oh, it is different. I thought it's definitely different. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe it's a new kit then. It's very similar, which I actually love because you're going to yeah. get treatment that look like each other. Um, I I prefer it. I think it looks way better than the other kit. I'm I'm looking forward to those. Uh, yes, the feet are different. The other tree is kind of moving the other direction. Right. Uh, I'm not okay. gonna lie. It does look a little bit like uh, somebody. You know, I mean, mirror it. Do this. <laughs> Click the mirror button. Um, yeah. Because, and actually, you know what? That's perfectly fine because I've brewed up myself a gnome team uh, to do some playtesting with when we get some rules. And um, I, I got one tree man and I mirrored him. So, <laughs> do you know what? That's absolutely fine. Um, so, we've got gnomes coming. They've got a garden gnome star player. They may or may not have Jordel Freshberries. But Jordel mm. Fresh Breeze is coming to Blood Bowl anyway. But we have seen some pretty uh, big Blood Bowl tournaments around the world already flag up and say, you're not allowed them. I think NAFC flagged up and said that you're not allowed them. And I think it was a Moracle Cup uh, that flagged up and said, you can't have any of them. Now, Milton, from your point of view, from a TO's point of view, let's let's leave uh let's leave the power and the fear off the table for a moment from a, from an organizational point of view what do you think the limiting factor is to be a, to to have these in a tournament from a, a to point there, of view there is definitely a couple of angles to this because i mean it depends when the tournaments are and when the release of this information is so that that's probably the first big point is and i can understand why if you're a to and it depends how they're organizing the tournament 
um, you know, if if they were doing it how we were doing it last year with paper, um, you know, getting submissions in, managing it all that way. The second these kind of changes come in, it's just an additional headache. It's a reshuffle. And yeah, you've got to set expectations with the players. And a lot of people will have already kind of made their lists if they know that the tournament's coming up been practicing with them um I mean, we always so, so have graham submit his list to our next roster like, yeah like two years before it's, yeah 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 which is wicked um we like graham. yeah so no they like graham the, yeah be like graham um so there's that kind of angle to it i, I think um yeah the the, the kind of <laughs> I don't, the thing is, is I don't really feel that there's like a game breaking element to these things because there's a, more than likely n neither of these things are going to be so, let's say, OP that someone's just going to come in and waltz the tournament with them because nobody's going to know how they work. I mean, Jordel maybe a little bit because he's an old star player and we've seen some of his stats and everything in BB3. Yeah. And and you've kind of got that element to it. But realistically, even with that, I'd be really surprised if somebody rocked up at the last minute with either of them and then took the tournament and was just like, oh, no, this is like the best build ever. Um, it's not to say that it's not possible, but, you know, it's, it's on some level, Games Workshop will have done some balancing. And let's say let's say we uh, we consider the fact that maybe they're slightly better for, from a sales perspective. Let, let, let's let's consider that angle. Like, oh, okay, they're the new best stunty team because you know they want to shift models because it's the new hot thing. Okay, but like it's a stunty team, so how far is it really going to get? Um, particularly with fresh, I, I, those, those are kind of the, the the two approaches I kind of come into it I'll with. So on, I'll touch on that in a minute, Milton. Okay, no, that's cool. I um, want to just reiterate one of your points there, Milton, which I think was the the uh, the best the best starting point for this conversation, which is uh, when's your roster deadline? Because if mm. stuff drops, uh, even uh, you know, uh, if stuff drops at the roster deadline or after it, I think it's completely it's an automatic no. Right. Even for our tournaments, mm. like we've always tried to be yeah. really flexible with like, OK, new Amazons have dropped, the, but the tournament, uh, the tournament roster window is open. Uh, so we've allowed both at that one tournament, for example, just to mean that if you've been practicing with old Amazons and you've got old Amazons, you can still bring them for that tournament because you've got it planned. But if you buy new Amazons and it's before the roster deadline, you can take the new Amazons to the tournament because if that's like we've always thought that was the fairest way to do it. Um, if you've got a big tournament with a big roster deadline, then I think absolutely like without there is there can be no shade to say, right, these new releases, they're outside of our roster window. That's a no-go for now, simply because rosters need to be in. Um, and I think that's a great and massively fair place to start. On the swinginess and the scariness of new, is that where you were going to head, BT? No, I was going to touch on how bad can Stunty be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean... Only from the most recent tournament where there was no Megastar tax and there were, oh. out of uh, 64 teams, uh, eight of them were Snotlings, and I think seven of those Snotling teams had Morg. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Morg, so Morg, Morg, like, Morg Skitter is yeah. the new... Um, he has the new, a, yeah, the new that humbug. is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah and that's... that's definitely fair, because Stunty, Stunty does not mean trash anymore. Like, Ogres are actually a really solid team. And we see this from when we look at, like, the stats. Um, Stunties are in the 20s. They're, like, you know, they're, they're third quadrant teams. They're not bottom, like, <laughs> uh, in a tournament stat, because they can do stuff. And, like Ben said, they can take stars, which absolutely boost their power up. So I can I, see I... Stunties being as threatening as another team. But it's just yeah. as, threat as threatening as another team. But like ogres and snotlings are well explored, and people are very used to them. They practiced a lot. Yep, that's that's that's, fair that's the thing that like uh, this is kind of where I, I sit with this. The the only other thing I was just thinking about that you you know you might take into consideration is you, you've planned the tournament, you've kind of. Uh, 
I mean, it really depends on 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 what the kind of tournament's about. I mean, you, you get all sorts of kind of different tournaments. But if you if you've got a tournament where you've got uh quite like a serious, I want to say, package, and you've got like a serious Crazy. prize pool, um, and you know that people are coming to play a reasonably serious competition because there's kudos at the end of it. There's a good trophy. There's a good prize pool or everything. Throwing something new into the mix is slightly unfair, particularly if people have been... That's the expectation that you've set. Um, even if they came out slightly before or even like a month or two before the deadline, I could still understand why some tournament organizers might hold off on letting people play with those as it kind of it so, is a curveball. So, plot twist, I utterly completely agree with your point on that one um i think there's a couple of a couple of things like part of the fun of prepping for an event that is a a you know like a a, a big a big deal to you in whatever way is kind of knowing the field looking at the skills looking at the meta trying to figure out right this in this package high edge teams are really potent so i'm going to gear my team towards this but and then I'm going to know that lots of people are going to be gearing their team to counter that. So I'm going to take the counter to the counter, right? And I come from a magic background. And you see this whenever there's a pro tour. You've got the pros who are looking at the top competing deck in the meta at the moment. They know that no one's going to take that because they think all the muggles are going to take that. So they take the deck that beats the top deck. So the pro pros take the deck that beats the deck that beats the top deck. And that's part of the prep. And they practice with that deck. And there should be, and I think it's very fair to, to come at this, if, if that's your mindset and if that's the, the competitive way that you want to play in a Blood Bowl event, then I, I think that's actually something that you don't think of immediately. You think it's a Games Workshop team should be allowed out. But one thing I would say, and Ben, I think this would be a lovely point for you to weigh in on, is um, why, why don't tournaments have a... a, a a new release cut off in, in, in to avoid the bad press why don't they say hey um we're locking down the environment from the end of february uh rosters are due end of april this is to make sure that everybody knows what the meta that they're playing in um is that the kind of thing you, you see or hear in the tournament circuit then um i haven't seen much of it um but uh, to be fair i haven't really been playing in lots of tournaments till this year and this is like the first major release since yeah, so, like, right. well, there was the whole um, thing with vampires, wasn't there? Everyone was scared of vampires. Uh, making, yeah, that's true. That was still early on. Ban them. Yeah, not allowed. Um, yeah, but it's like I, I, I think that's probably the best way of doing it. I can't really see. I can't really find a flaw in the argument of just I, having that deadline. I agree with that because you know we're potentially looking at two teams a year, hopefully. All right, and so there's that kind of expectation that at least, well, at least one team is going to come out, and you don't know when. You've got a vague idea. Maybe if we're lucky, we're going to get it. And so I think baking that cutoff in makes makes a lot yeah. of sense. Just put it in the pack and make it a thing. Yeah. And then if you're signing up to that tournament, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no feel bad. There's no. It's like right. No. I'm going to this tournament. I know the environment's locked from February. Uh, so actually, at that point, I'm fully. But I'm pretty sure that's what they really did with the with the World Cup. Um, but but it's just mm. when you see someone be like, nah, it's banned because we don't know how dangerous it's going to be or no, it's banned because we don't know if it's going to be too good and too unfair to use. That's the language and that's the stuff that I think causes the like, what is wrong with you reactions that we get on the Internet. Now, Milton, you are um, not a Facebook chap. Um so you may have missed the fireworks in the Blood Bowl community over the last week mm. because these tournaments have said, yeah, not we don't we don't know if it's, we don't know if these things are balanced, so we're not going to let them in. As opposed to saying, hey, we've locked the meta, we've locked the environment. Um, it, it gives that feeling of like, okay, so you, you're never going to let it in, and that might be the angle that causes the uh, what is this? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of. Um... I think, yeah, it, more often than not, I think it's the way things are phrased or worded or perhaps 
it's like a, a knee-jerk reaction to the situation. And again, we, you know, we've covered this many times before. People like to play the game in different ways. There's so many different ways to experience and play Blood Bowl. And, you know, if you do have a, a, um, a competitive tournament where, you know, you're expecting the players to compete at a reasonably high level, then that's one thing. But you might also get a tournament where... Um, People are just there to have fun. You know, it's not it's not on the same level. You're not engaging on the same level. And therefore, yeah, gnomes away. <laughs> gnomes away, indeed. Um, now, on the, uh, like, Ben, I think we had this chat where we talked about vampires. Uh, on, the yeah. ex- on the overriding the tier or overriding the, the ban or, or factoring too hard on the no rather than the yes... I mean, what's your opinion on that for tournaments? I don't know if I've explained myself very well there. But... I mean, yeah, I was actually kind of in the pro tier one for vampires category mm. when they came out. And I know that was not like probably not the popular choice, but I think it goes, it leans into like worst case scenario, really. Worst case scenario is that they're broken. They're tiered at tier two or tier three or whatever. And then like, they a week, stop. you know, two weeks before, yeah, it becomes obscene and everyone takes it and no one has a good time. And I think the other the situation is they are tier one. People still have the option to try them because they're new and shiny. It's not that much of a nerf, but like the the option is still there and it's not going, it's the safest way of introducing them. Now, Stunty, I think, is a different category because Stunty is usually always tiered lower. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't think we will see the same problem with the Stunty team. But I would be a bit concerned. Like, I, I, sorry, I can see why people would be a bit concerned. I, I would say that if anything, I'd be more concerned about a stunty team because if they're put into a tier three or lower category, they've then got access to more skills and more stars. And if there is a problem with them, then it's more likely to be mm. broken as part of the package. I think the problem is going to be broken in the stars, though. Stars are really broken. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> oh, ban stars. stars. That's the uh, <laughs> just, just get, get rid of stars. I mean, take take Jordale back. Yeah, I know. I I kind of in that camp now. (laughs) Ben would hate me for this, but I would be so happy to never see a star player in Blood Bowl again. Well, well, so happy. That was my historical standpoint um, of we're here to play Blood Bowl. We're not here to play the star player poll in the old edition. Um, It's it's just you have more rosters with stars. Um, and I think that, that mm. uh, that's something I find more interesting because that was something that I really did not enjoy. And there's going to be some of you out there that, that start twitching as I say this. In the old edition, it was like, here is my ex-elf team. And it is exactly the same as all ex-elf teams with exactly the same skills. And it is the same build. And we sit down and we played this game 8,000 times before. Like, and that was a bit stagnant for me. As you go into like a, a new environment where you've got 30 teams, but within those 30 teams, you've got maybe 34 different rosters. Uh, and then within those 30 teams, you've got a couple of star players. So then you're actually looking at potentially, well, we see this, Milt, in all our tournaments. There's like 77 players sign up. You're going to end up with 75 different rosters. And that's amazing. I, I'd rather see variants in the tournament package. I'd rather see the the variants be introduced in the tournament. You know, you want to introduce a niche thing that happens. You know, Games Workshop has published so many, like, extra league situations and the spikes you know make make some weird thing that happens in your in your tournament and then people can adjust their roster to adapt for that knowing that's going to be a thing whoa now, ah. you're, now you're changing the rules of blood ball there ah but, so i'll just play um, 2016 ben. Yeah. so i i agree with you entirely Hawk. but i think that's only so i think from like a tournament management perspective that's only really become viable recently with tools like tour play because if you had like 80 players come up and you have three different variants of packages for every team and you've got to go through and manually roster check all of those, I think you'd just like uh-huh. lose your mind, right? I mean, I think Ben might have meant like other inducements and like... Yeah, that's all I meant. Oh, okay. So so that, that kind of thing. I thought you meant like different skill packages or like different ways that you can manage each team because we've seen a bit of that more recently. Have we, have um, we, yeah. just, have we just solved competitive Blood Bowl? here no no genuinely i'm not being sassy what remove star players yeah no no yeah, no, is... no 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 but we have just defined the two different types of blood bowl that people want to play which is 
competitive and open, right? You have an open tournament where you can bring stuff that's in the game, okay? If you've got Blood Bowl and you've got Blood Bowl models, you can play with your Blood Bowl models and you can play Blood Bowl with Blood Bowl models. And then you have essentially a competitive format where there is a release schedule lockdown. You know, you could call it seasons. You could call it like, you know, your rotation periods or whatever. And you don't necessarily have the stars or you, you know, you, you hype attack stars or something. But that you know going into it, what you're up to i'd imagine most would be open but there would be some and it could even like like the nap c and stuff like that that are that are you know hyper comp actually then you brand it that way um and then you kind mm. of have this little sub format which the naf could then allow to tick over every six months and say actually we're not letting gnomes in because they've landed too early they go live on the first of july and uh, we're going to use the tournament data well, they don't have any tournament data because they're not allowed. That would be my biggest issue. But we can use the tournament data from the open tournament to set the standard for competitive or or whatever we call it. I, well, I'm quite excited by that idea. And I think actually this is one of the big problems is that all the games get lumped into one. So, like, you know, if you're going to go and log your NAF results, it doesn't matter what format of the game you're playing. It's like they're all together. And then when you go and look at that data... It's like, well, how do you determine what's what? But if you did, say, have a competitive like run and then you wanted to run a tournament that followed that set, great, that's fine. You know, and, and people wanted to go and attend that, cool. And then you could then actually see the competitive like stats for people that are interested in that kind of thing. Mm. Um, whereas if you just want to, you know, like Sandbowl, for example, and have a star player as part of your lineup and whatever and have a bit of fun. Models. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, having a competitive sub format like that would also allow you to say, at competitive events, all players must be NAF registered. Uh, and actually, then you're going into it being like, oh, this is this is a pro tournament. Like this is this is a this is not just my local shop running a tournament. This is not just a a big open. Like this is a being run by the NAF a NAF premium event, and it's competitive only or something like that. I don't know. Mm. I feel like that might just clear a couple of things up and actually could it well hey i love rosters so having 30 teams rosters for the competitive environment that changes every six months <laughs> yes please that would make me very happy uh even though in a competitive environment it wouldn't change very often um but you would see some some legit stuff but that just for me that could that could solve it i think you'd see a lot a lot less tournaments listed as competitive than open uh, I think that's how it should be, and I think you'd get smaller pools of players at competitive. But you, the people who would be wanting to play a competitive event with like stricter rules, would be well up for it. And those players that dare go from open to comp, they kind of go into it eyes open. And that was, I think, what you you hear from players that go to their first tournament. They're like, "Oh, I saw it was NAF registered, and I was a bit concerned because I was worried I was going to get ruffle stomped by some miserable person who doesn't uh, who doesn't enjoy fun." Um, and actually, that's not what we see at most events. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm just interesting. We might have might have solved that problem. <laughs> yeah. So circling back around, I've just been reading. Apparently, the gnomes really don't like the elves at all in the lore. There you go. <laughs> um, so they don't like that's halflings like, either. They don't like halflings either. They but... don't like dwar They don't like anyone. But uh, but the interesting thing about them is is they are basically made of magic. They are part of the uh, one of the winds of magic, and only people with witch sight can see them, which I think all the elves have, don't they? So maybe oh, that'd be cool. interesting for the other teams. They can't see. Yeah, you. they can't see them. <laughs> well, that's a hell of a spectator sport, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love commentating games. I would struggle with that one. Uh, <laughs> did you see that play? No. No. Uh, no. <laughs> No, we didn't. Um, the goose, and that's yeah, it. That was an interesting one. Now, <laughs> as we're talking about the realm of tournaments and things like that, Ben, why don't you give us the rundown of Beast Mode 4? Yeah. So this was a team tournament in Peterborough, um, which I've never been to before. Um, unusual place, but we made it. And, um, yeah, it was. Uh, I went with uh, Tactics and Theatrics, my, my World Cup team. We had two teams, actually. We had an A team and a B team. We had more Tactics, less Theatrics, and less Tactics, more Theatrics. So um, 
I was naturally in less tactics. And um, we uh, we went along, and it was a two-day, six-game tournament. And the, the caliber of this tournament was pretty damn high. Like, we had a, a Team England squad. We had an Andy Davo squad. Um, I mean, even in our team, we had two of Team England. Oh, sorry, we had one in our team and then one in the other team. Two sex guys. I'm um, going to have to abandon you for just a couple of minutes. Continue talking between yourselves, and I'll jump back in. Tiff just needs a hand right. Libby. Uh, so I'll be back <laughs> in a couple of minutes. That's okay. I'll ramble on about uh, about this tournament. So um, yeah, no, it was it was a solid tournament. It was um, it was very hard. I think is the best way to put it. Um, I don't go to many tournaments that are like this, like I want to say sweaty. Is that <laughs> actually that's a great way to describe it? Yeah, so I mean, so it, was, it, help it, was, it was three games each day. Yeah, three each day. Yeah. What, what, what were the timings like? When did you what? Was it well spaced out? Was it kind of similar to what we run? Yeah, it was similar. Yeah, so sort yeah. of start about half nine and 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 finish around sort of five six. Um, right. Yeah, and it was it was good. Um, it was interesting pairings. So they so normally in team tournaments they um, they Swiss pair the teams and then they Swiss pair within the teams against each other. So like the best player of each team will play right. each other. And then right. so on down the yeah, team. Makes sense. But in this, I think, I think they did it where it was just whoever was on the top of the registration form, like oh. in that order, played each other. Okay. So our team, our poor team captain, ended up playing the team captains of other teams, which ended up usually being the best player. Right. Um. So it, it, yeah, it, I think it wasn't, it wasn't the fairest way of doing it. They Swiss pair, they Swiss paired it at the end though, which is very frustrating because in my team I was top of the team. In going into the last round and the final round we played against the a team of our team it was right. a versus b okay and that meant i was playing against break Munker, who is in england like squad and is an insane player he won the best gaven at the world cup oh right yeah yeah i remember <laughs> and they just announced it then just like oh yeah no sorry for the last round it's going to be swiss paired and i was just like Are you kidding what? me <laughs> why so, why how, now <laughs> how are they doing the pairings was it to a play no no, 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 manually. They did oh, it okay. Manually. So, yeah, so what was what was roster submission like then? Uh, good question. I gave it to my team captain. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it was just you. You just did a team. I think it was just manual. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, all, all so, manual. so how many how many teams? How many players overall? Uh, so yeah, sixteen teams. Sixteen teams. So sixty four. Wow. Okay, that's pretty yeah. Good a few going. dropouts as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think a shout out to um Justin, who I believe was running it. Um, fantastic. Um. It did go really fluent, uh, really fluidly. It was all lunch provided. Wow, it was good. Okay, that's pretty good. How was the venue itself? Yeah, so it was in like a like a village hall. Um, okay, and like a scout hut. It felt like, which is all actually right. ideal. Like it worked. Yeah. It, was, it, yeah, it works. Cramped. There's a lot of people in there um, right. for the size, but uh, no, I think it worked. I think it was it was good because they ran it as like a um, pure like non-profit event so like all the money went into uh like prizes similar to like what we do we, i mean we, we, make, we make losses so we probably don't do it as well but um yeah. like it, all the money went into like the venue hire was quite cheap and then it all meant like there was like prizes and then there was a charity raffle and stuff and it, it was okay. good um that's really good yeah uh i think so so my, i'll talk about my games really briefly um game one we played against the black hawk down uh family oh, okay. so the, the people who make the dice mm -hmm. um uh, we got a team win out of that. Um, uh, so some some newer players, and you know, obviously us being sweaty, just we, we did we did win we did win our games. Um, I think Black Hawk Down guy did win his. I think um, can't remember, but yeah, I was up against Wood Elves um, doing high elf stuff. Oh yeah, I'll talk about I'll actually talk about my team. So I, I took high elves, normally doing corn. Um, yeah, that surprised these, me. All these corn games. Yeah, so. The way the tiering worked um, was that within your team, you all had to have teams of different tiers. Mm. And there were five tiers. So there was one you could ignore. Um, in our team, we had tier one, three, four, and... Five, no, one, two, four, and five. So we had a Dark Elf player in tier one. Yeah. Me in High Elf's tier two, which is weird, because Elven Union was yeah. tier three, and I think Union are better. Um, yeah, okay. We missed out three. We had Slan in tier four and Snotlings tier five. Um, only tier four and five could take starts as well. 
Um, so yeah, hence the abundance of Morg Hack Flem's not links. Yeah, that's which... that's crazy. So th that's really interesting as well because yeah. we discussed this for our upcoming team event about potentially doing this. Each each player in the team has to take from a particular tier. How how do you think that? played out in the team choices because obviously i think despite that you'd have probably taken your corn as that's kind yes, of your so objective it, it, right it, it tied with slan I, I thought yeah we'll go you know mm. green skin feels playing a slan you can play a slan you can play fine. a slan <laughs> yeah I, I i wanted the um i wanted the redemption of the high elves because the world cup was so bad mm. i wanted to be like okay i'm gonna ignore everything i learned at the world cup i was playing them too sensibly i'm gonna go chaos and have a bit of fun i've been playing corn for 18 games in a row or whatever. So um, I'm going to just do something completely different for a weekend and have some fun with it, um, which I did. And it worked. So It's good. No, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, that's what, it, what were you saying? Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. But that, that, that tiering choice. So because uh, we've we kind of discussed it didn't we? and we felt that potentially it was going to be a bit like restrictive. But then you're talking again, kind of circling back around to what we were talking earlier. Mm. It sounded like this was quite a competitive tournament. There are a lot of like yes good players there and so those decisions yeah. would have been made quite early i imagine i think so and i think it's an interesting way of doing it within the team i think it actually encourages a lot of like team discussion and planning which is good and that's kind right. of what you want from a team tournament so yeah i think it works really well um i would like to see it again i think i think there maybe could have been no, no, I think it's fine. I was going to say there maybe could have been a bit more granularity between the tiers, but I think actually it's fine. I think you could even have four tiers and four players. I think that is just interesting. Um, you need to sort of decide who's do who's going to do what. Um, yeah, I, I it's guess it stops everybody just running tier one and then being really good at it. <laughs> and like, yeah. Really yeah, giving it might encourage people up. mixing things up. Yeah, yeah, although, like you said, <laughs> it sounds like the... Uh, the, the tier five, the stunty choices all went the same way. Oh, there should have been attacks there. Yeah, it was. Did Did you end up playing a stunty team? I did actually. Yeah. It was like it was one of the snotling teams that did not have Morg. Thank you. Okay. Um, and how did that elves go? against snotlings? Yeah, it's it's a bit in the old favor. I think yeah. that was a, a two one win. Okay. Um, no, was that? 3-1, I think. That was actually 3-1. Um, because, uh, yeah, they, they especially if they didn't have the threat of Morg and Hackflem, mm. um, elves do just run through Snotlings, like Snotlings run through people. Mm. You know, it's just 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus. Yeah, you just go and, through. And, and, and then you've yeah. got the strength advantage, so wherever you need to make a block, you can. Um, yeah, although you say that, my tackle piece did blitz the Snotling stilty ball carrier and rod a triple skull, so... Yeah, yeah. That's not <laughs> when great. I was out of rerolls. <laughs> so you had six games. Uh, yes. How many of the six did you win? Uh, I won three, through really one, and lost two. So pretty even record. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's with. pretty great. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's positive record. Yeah. Um, um, and not only that, you took a prize. I did. I came home with um with the best painted, which is well my deserved. first one. Yeah, I, I've, yeah, really I've never well won one before. Though. Um, thank you. Yeah, it was my high elves, which I was really proud of. Um, yeah, they are brilliant. So now I can officially plug if you want an award winning team. Yeah. I don't know if you finally got it. Go to brushtype.com. <laughs> Use both. No, that's really good. Like, like you've, you've, yeah. you've deserved one of those for a long time. <laughs> I think, thank like, it is, it is really difficult. Like, I think that the, uh, yeah, like, people put in so much effort into their teams, and sometimes it's not even just the, the paint the quality of the paint job is it it's the like the character of the team or yeah. whatever else is going on and sometimes that plays into it but yeah, yeah i think sure. you know in terms of in terms of quality like your paint jobs are fantastic so it's well well deserved on that and the highlights in you. particular were very nice because I, I know you put a lot of time and effort into them going into the world cup did you take yeah. your um because um i've got his name now your squad captain he bit made you um oh the dugout yeah the dugout um, HD, yeah, HD, he, uh, yes. he, we uh, all of our team had our dugouts. He actually made a new one for uh, Greenskin Field Slan, which oh, had really? a little resin pour like fish swimming in it. Wow, you've got to send me a picture of that because that's uh, yeah, that sounds yeah, awesome. Oh, and his, it was, yeah, his stuff's really really great. He's working on an electronic one now, which is very interesting. An electronic one, 
Yeah, as in like you could... LEDs and things. Oh, okay. I thought you just meant yeah. it was like a tablet screen that you could just like change no, underneath. No. I think it's going to yeah, LEDs, I think an integrated like seven segment display oh, thing. Yeah, okay. That's I really think. cool. I'll have to that's see. Really cool. But um, yeah, no, he does phenomenal work. And yeah, it's a real, real pleasure to be on their team. I will touch on actually something in the rule set as well that I forgot. They had the three skill cap. So you can't take three of the same skill on your roster. And that ties Even back if you've already the got the skill yes. on... Right, yeah. okay. Uh, sorry, no, 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 on top of that. So having on the skill of... doesn't limit okay. it. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Which I think when we're talking about ways of manipulating rule sets that you mm. don't have the same rule, uh, roster every time, I think that's a really nice rule. I, yep. I'm a big fan of the skill limitations. Mm. I think it makes you really think and consider new play styles. Like, for instance, I... My high elf roster before was just dodge, 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 and then like yeah. a wrestle. And um, yeah, because but, why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah there's exactly. No, there's no reason yeah. not to. There's no disadvantage. There's like no advantage to not taking that. It's just like you could take a worse skill. Of in that might yeah open up some new utility. Probably but you're not probably gonna. Not. Yeah, I mean I've done it 101 times with my orcs, where it's either like all block, all guard, yeah, block, all, block, guard, yeah, guard, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like. I think even sometimes more limitations, like two, just to, just like, and like the one that was at Barton Bowl where it included mm. yeah. inbuilt skills. Yeah, I just think it it's such a new dynamic, and you start to think just like, okay, so how can I manipulate this? What what are the people gonna bring? Like, like for instance, I had um, a tackle blitzer one because I couldn't have another dodge, and I had so I had one blodger and two dodge catchers, mm. uh, one wrestle catcher. Um, so I gave tackle on the blitzer because I considered, well, one, we're going to have a lot of stunty teams because the tiers, um, two, I imagine when people are now picking other skills, some teams that might not take dodge will take dodge because Mm. if they're thinking of defensive skills, you know, you're talking block and dodge usually is like the main two. So it might be some, yeah. So some like dodging, um, Mm. say dodging ghouls, we already covered it, but. Yeah, that kind yeah, of... I I agree with you on that 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 point where I think there are definitely more ways you can change it up and create the variation in the roster. Um, I think I know what Ben was saying is that like back back before the the rules changed, things were quite samey, but I well everything's very different now isn't it i mean even with the star player element because of the keywords so 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 many other teams have access to star players and i think this is where a lot of the the changes come from because you know back in 2016 edition you would have an orc team and then the orcs would have a set amount of stars like particular stars that could play for them rather than the keyword and have access to all of that so yeah i I I I'd, I'd love to see less stars and more choices. But I definitely see Ben's point I don't want to see less variation in the rosters. Yeah, but I it's I going to be such a hard so, balance. But there's I think there's so many ways around it. So many ways. Um it's just like that, that that's one of them and then you can also have like Yeah, no there's just there's just a lot of, there's just a lot of things you could do I think that that limit it. I I think I think a lot of us felt the same way about this tournament was that the star spam was just a bit much. Mm. Like I even played my final game against Breakmonker. He was running this like horrible OWA list. Horrible. Because he brought OWA Morgue. Oh. And it was like, How he yeah, he had that? like nothing. So he had nothing. He had one reroll, um, which he actually didn't use against me. Um, and it was just... Yeah, like no players. He had a troll slayer, a human blitzer, and a human catcher. Those are the only positionals. Oh, and a halfling, um, which he used to put on the line for a vicious ref on like turn eight. Um, oh. Defending against. I, I, ref I can I can feel eight. that. I've played against Deep Root Zug OWA. <laughs> that was that was hard work. That was really hard work. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, just that's, a lot. I, I really wonder what the decision was to not put the megastar tags in. Because I yeah. mean, we've, we've been sat on that for a while now. It's not like a new concept. So I'm not sure. It could have been in the rules pack, as in like the justification, but I kind of remember. Um, mm. I think it might have just been a choice to, you know, I don't know, 
give because because you got Play the game basically, basically yeah. To, yeah. yeah um but yeah it was <laughs> i just man i it's a couple of times now i've played against uh morgue in this edition like thankfully not often i think uh, that was my probably second game maybe third actually but um mm. he's just he's just too much like there's there's a there's a limit and i know he's expensive but it gets to a point in the game where you're just like you've got this guy who fails a block against most people one in like over 200 times and just and then the damage he does is it just obscene it's mighty and blow plus 2 him, is the problem it is mighty <laughs> blow plus 2 yeah and like you you play your entire game around that, which I, I know is kind of the point of stars sometimes is that they change up the game plan. But I think the psycho psychological impact of him being there is just huge. Mm. And it's not like like Fungus, which in my opinion, you take a star like Fungus, who's cheap, to basically buy you a turn. Like yeah. you can delay your opponent because they're just like, okay, now I have to worry about that. And if mm. they take a turn committing players to blitz him, it's kind of just like, okay, cool. So you've you've gone out of position to to remove that and it's kind of cost you a few players being out of position i think that's kind of like inbuilt to the cost of him he might take a couple of people out on the way might not um might be yours but <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. yeah exactly but like so i think there's some element of that but when it's players like morg who are just so dangerous and so hard to get rid of yeah it, it's uh, yeah it's, sometimes it's a bit of a problem i think I, I came away from that weekend fully exhausted and being like, and, and not only me, a few other people on our team were just like, man, I, I want to see the back of star players. <laughs> what was the team value? What was the TV limit of the tournament? Or was it done by Blue in Tears? Uh, no, it was 11.50, I think, for everyone. Some team may have had a bit more, but it wasn't like that much. Damn. Yeah. That is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounded like it was a it was a fun weekend anyway. It was very fun. It was yeah. very fun. It was. I got to play Andy Davo, which I'm really happy about. Um, he absolutely destroyed me with vampires, and it was very confusing because <laughs> we painted our teams in the exact same color scheme. <laughs> like when it all got into a ruckus, yeah, it was like when we were setting up line of scrimmage. It was like we were putting each other's players on a line, being like, "Oh wait, no, that's not mine." That's <laughs> sure. It was. It was completely identical. Um, uh, but that guy can play. My word. Um, yeah. Who knew? I'm not, I'm not surprised the amount of games he plays. Yeah, um, he does play a lot. But... <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah I, I I live. he's well versed in. Uh... I, I live for the dream of being able to play a Blood Bowl game a night. <laughs> I have five. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, no, no. My dream is Speaking simply of... one. Five a week would be absolutely exquisite. Um... I'll say five a night, but yeah. Uh, right. Slightly the same side. games. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, oh. have you have you guys started seeing gnomes more than you normally would? <laughs> In general, what I mean, yes. Yeah, what what yeah. I mean by that is, <laughs> since the gnome release, doesn't matter where I go, I seem to see gnomes. But the funniest one was literally after the gnome announcement, our neighbours came home with a garden gnome, <laughs> and I was like, "What is going on?" I have a theory, actually. I think uh, where the Christmas gonks started hitting like five years ago, I think it's just saturated because there's now Easter gnomes as well. Yes, yes. I, I we blame... went to the range earlier and they've got them everywhere. I blame gonks. Easter gnomes. Yeah. yeah. What are gonks? Gonks? Well, you know I don't... what a gonk uh, is? I thought it was those, those droids in Star Wars, aren't they? Oh, well, they are, but <laughs> yeah, not... Gonks are the little... Christmas gnomes is the only way I can describe yeah, them. Yeah, right? I have much. never heard of these. Hang on. Yeah. Gonk. I'm just going to Google Gonk. Oh, my maybe. God. That's that's what, maybe that's what they should have called the team. Oh, what, with the, the uh, nose and the beard? Yeah, with the nose and the yeah. beard. Oh, I have one of these. Okay, <laughs> called a gonk. Called okay. a gonk. There we go. No, I just wondered whether it was just me. But no. like, I feel like I just notice gnomes everywhere now. They've become a... Part of our lives. Honk, honk, here's Gonk. <laughs> oh, I really hope they do also, a star player called Gonk. It was what, what you, something you said the other day, and I, keep, I can't unhear it now. It's every time you say garden gnome, having the garden gnome. Was that, was that actually intentional, do you think? A hundred percent. If you said that, then I was like, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. That was why they did that. Beast Master is the garden gnome. Yeah. Yep. Incredible. The garden gnome. <laughs> 
perfect. I'm very much looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing all the Smurf ones uh, that drop. Mm, um, yeah. So, Fans be able to buy one, right? sorry for bouncing away, but we have this thing with our child where she's fine. Uh, but if we bath her, doesn't matter what time of day, if we bath her in the morning or the afternoon or the evening, when it gets to nine o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, she turns into just this ball of rage and hate. And I don't really understand because we use a thermometer to make sure the bath is an appropriate temperature. The seat she's got has a water level. So it's not like we're waterboarding her in the Atlantic. It's like she has a nice bath experience. No candles. That would be ridiculous. So, And she's happy in the bath. She's happy after the bath. But then she goes down to bed and she's like, right, sleep. And then she has Vietnam flashbacks. And she just wakes up, like, punching, screaming. like. <laughs> so Tiff was like, um, help, because I'm about to FedEx her away. Uh <laughs> she's calm now she's perfect but i don't know why i was like it's because you bathed her it's because you bathed her i was like you should just you know let her naturally clean herself it'll be fine um it's really <laughs> weird like, we, that, we is, that is strange we were like right we're gonna bath her in the morning this time because then if she freaks out it's only the afternoon and it's fine and she was good as gold and then it got to the evening and she was like demons <laughs> um yeah very very strange anyway oh, Milton, can you shed any light on this or is that just my child uh... being strange I cannot share it with that one. I've definitely not had that one. That does, does sound a bit of similarity to a gremlin, though. You're not supposed to get them wet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she is our little gremlin. I like that. Uh, I like that. But no, I'm sorry I had to bounce away from that. I'm actually going to get to this, listen back to the podcast, which is quite an exciting <laughs> thing for me. Um, right, lads, are you ready to move on to the Milton Bowl? Yeah, the Milton Bowl. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't know how this is going. It's a going. It's a going. So, how many teams are in the Milton Bowl? It's 20. It's 20. It was 20. There I am at the bottom. Yeah. Zero for zero. So, Milton, just talk us through. You know, we talked about the, the fumble and the league for the Discord uh, when, we, when, you, when, when you launched it, but give us a little brief, bring us up to speed. Yeah, we were um, <clears throat> kind of having a bit of a chat about. Um, Playing oh. some online games and sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just clicked my team ready to play and I lost thirty k in expensive mistakes. Ooh. that was a miss. Why didn't you buy them for a reroll? Play them for a reroll. Oh yeah, that sucks. Um, oh well, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, no, so we were talking about uh, we, well, we've we've talked about it on and off for a while about kind of getting some digital league or tournament or something kind of going. I feel like I was hanging Come off on, for the... Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was just waiting for the Blood Bowl 3 stuff. And then the Blood Bowl 3 stuff dropped. And it's there, but it's not what I really wanted, I guess. And I just it just seems like a whole lot of effort. And so I started talking about Fumble again. Um, I mean, Fumble's a very different experience to Blood Bowl 3, but the advantages oh. are we do have all the teams... And the rules. We do have all the rules, and it's kind of an easier entry level. You know, you just need a PC that can run. That's pretty much it. That's the main, like, the main requirement. <laughs> From the last one that turn, 20 years. Preferably one turn, that's not yeah. too modern. Yeah, yeah, one that turns on. Um, <laughs> still has some battery or whatever. Um <laughs> But yeah, no, um, so uh, yeah, I decided we were going to do that. It was quite impromptu. Hmm. And so I know there are a whole bunch of you that were really interested in joining that kind of missed the cutoff. Um, but this was a little bit of an experiment. And because I, A, I just wanted to know how to sort of set it up and get it running and get it working, getting it working the way I wanted it to. So far, I think it's been going all right. Um, hopefully everyone else will agree with that. Other than last week where I was like really like quite unwell and I was trying to arrange the uh the games I just ended up pairing the same people again. Um but besides that it's been it's been going quite well. And I know there's a whole bunch of uh players in the in the league that have not used Fumble before, so there's a whole whole bunch of people learning that, which I think is really cool. Um, and we are roughly halfway through. We're on round four now, so we're four weeks in. Some of the round four games have been played, and it is quite clear um, as to who's doing very well and who's not doing so well. 
but I think that adds to the fun of it. So the way we, way we're running it is it's um it's an open format um uh round robin, but I'm doing the pairings manually. So it's semi Swiss. I'm basically pairing the top two players who haven't played each other. So whoever's top, whoever's next down that they haven't played before to try and kind of even it out a bit which yeah i think it's it's, it's going all right um i'm not yeah i'm not 100 percent. I, I think it's the fairest way of doing it oh yeah i think that's um that's everybody's gonna go into that and no one's gonna be like well, that seems unfair it's gonna be like well that seems fair enough like yeah it, it's it's creating for an interesting interesting matchups and i think the the biggest upset for me has been this round where Currently at the top, we've got um, 16 Castles with his Dwarf team and Stripey Dave with his Slan. And they played against each other and they tied. And I was so convinced that one of them would win. I wasn't sure which one would win because I, there's a, the, the Dwarf team is very solid, but there's a really good chance that the Slan just jump over the top of them and run away with the ball. Sounds um, like both things <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah, and apparently that's exactly what happened based on the feedback is that uh, yeah, neat, like they did a little bit of both and then met in the middle and tied and they were like, they seemed really happy that it was a like, nice fair game. And I was like, no, I was hoping someone was going to be a clear winner. I suppose the advantage to it is now no one's getting getting away with a, a clean sweep of uh, wins because they've... That is, um, yeah, that is beneficial. No, that, one, no so, one's undefeated going into the playoffs. No, and it's pulled their points down a little bit because um, it's 30 for a win, uh, 10 for a draw, zero for a loss. That's the right one. Um, and so they've obviously only got an additional 10 points for that plus whatever casualties worked out. I mean, 16 castles, 12 casualties, positive, none. none. Oh, negative Sam. So, zero oh my god sam 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 yeah and oh. he brought um he bought a death roller for that game although he said it didn't really work out how he'd wanted it to but that's fair enough death well, is really cool. like, like to run against a big guy i suppose uh, i'm really trying yeah. to get block my my block on my blood spawn before i face him because i've got a claw right. with your nice <laughs> skills yeah block mighty blow on one of your seekers ben uh yeah, I was I kind of wish I'd put claw on him now actually, knowing I've got to go up against Sam at some point. But yeah. Uh who's um, the undead team Crunch Bunch got this round, Milton? Yes, he has uh great question. I think looks... he's playing Stratford. I think he's playing the Skaven. Ooh, cause that yeah, because either one of <clears> those... That will be really interesting. But yeah, I think I think he's got a good chance of winning that, although Skaven can always just run away from it. But they're an even valued team. Stratford Skaven looks like he's on a tough. Is he time. playing? Is he playing the Skaven or is he playing the Dark Elves? Give me a second. I'll double check that. Looks like Stratford you... went with the two gutter and a rat ogre builds. Bought the third gutter runner, but gave his throw a block. Ooh, no, no. Crunch Bunch is playing Kaijin Chicken, Ooh. so he's not. He's playing the Dark Elves. Ooh, that's a tough he's, one. He's already played the Skaven. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. Oh, that will be an interesting. I love it. It's so cool to see these teams but, starting to take shape, though. All those teams are great, but the most interesting ones, I feel, are at the bottom, right? <laughs> it's the, it's the stunty Frodo's <laughs> fodders. The fact he's named them all after cannon fodder uh, dudes is just the highlight of the league for me. Oh wow! I I, love that. I feel that all three of us feel like we're suffering <laughs> enormously. Well, at least with the way um, you're organising the rounds, you're going to be paired up against... We're going to other... play each other. Yeah, I suspect I'm probably going to be playing Sharon's Goblins next. Maybe. Um, so I've played Frodo's Halflings. They, uh, Frodo and Sharon played each other, but they tied. So if I can beat Sharon, I'll be king of the stunties, and I can live <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> that because is playing... Sunday is at 18th place. <laughs> well, there was there was a point where all three of us, I think, were below your Amazon team, which is the odd <laughs> man in. It's round two. <laughs> it's like how did how, how are we all below the team that hasn't played? You all had like negative time rates. Negative scores. Like, Sweet, I'm coasting in top twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> after not playing. I think that's wicked. It's been an experience. This is the first time I've ever played a stunty team uh, properly, I'd say, because I've played stunty league and I've played with stunty players, but I've never played a stunty team in a league environment or like, like well, in, in a proper league environment with other um, standard teams. And I've never played Snotlings before, other than including them in my... And, and that's the reason I picked them, was because I included them in my mixed team for Bonehead Bowl with my Orcs. Well, they're great with Orcs, but I don't have my Orcs anymore, and I'm still playing them like Orcs, and it's not working. Oh, I love um, Bumble, man. The amount of statistical stuff that's on here is just, oh, it's just so yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it's fantastic. So you can see yeah. how well... Bambi's mum played in the last game against the Sea Sparrows. It's just oh, yeah. oh, it's just wicked. Yeah, sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's horrifying. If you if you'd have seen my last game where I just I, well, I had Hackflam and on that. Bomber and I just couldn't get the ball. I could throw bombs. Every single bomb throw I think was successful and they were all six pluses and they were all just like lob it to the other side of the pitch. And yet, any time I wanted to pick the ball up, it was a fail. Um, and yeah, I guess I, the, the thing I've learned is probably not to take randoms on your snotling positionals because I got Juggernaut and then Thick Skull on, on what I'm now dubbing my Ugh. Troll Blitzer, who <laughs> I actively blitz with every turn now, because why not? <laughs> And then I've also got Stand oh. Firm on the other troll. And oh. then Armbar. And I finally got Guard on the Pump Wagon. But... Oh, nice. Yeah. No, Guard is no guard is not what you want on the Pump Wagon. Well, it's something. <laughs> at least he can assist the, the is troll blitz. Least... <laughs> yeah. Safe pair yeah, of hands I mean, I, I suppose and... Guard's not super helpful in... A snotling team because you're not you don't have like like none of the snotlings can block no, anything no, ever guard is helpful guard on the trolls gives the pump wagon pluses oh to that's bowling. true that, like, yeah it's, that's it's, true it, that's the combo that's the dream but the pump wagon's like far I'll, I'll guard myself um yeah well it would be nice if the pump wagon well if i knew what i was doing with the pump wagon is probably the best way of putting that oh, it man. ends up on the floor most of the time but it's all right i'm learning a lot and I kind of just taking the approach of I will just run. Like I think you said earlier, I just run the snot things wherever now. I think there was a sort of a, a kind of a learning curve there, especially from not having played any like elf teams or I, I tend to play bashy teams, not playing edge teams and not really having that concept in my mind of I can just jump through all these players. You've kind of got and to I'm let looking... go. You kind of got to learn to let go with snot things. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I'm getting the hang of it where I'm just like okay. Well, I've managed to run Hackflam all the way up there, but he's kind of on his own. So now I'm just going to charge my entire Snotlings through the line yes. and just see where I can get to. Rush, rush, rush. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Channel but me. But then, I love but it. then the the ones. I mean, I don't know whether Channel trips. trips. <laughs> talk to Krista about my dice or something. I don't like. It's just one after one after one in that game. It's, um, it's not the no, spice will flow. The dice will flow. Uh, yeah, no. So it's um, it's been really good, and I yeah, I've really appreciated that everyone's been really on it with their games. Like sometimes I'll post the pairings, and like a game will be done within the hour. Uh, that <laughs> like, is people so are really cool. keen. Um, yeah. So um, it's been really good, and uh, yeah, I'd love to keep doing this. Uh, I mean, I really enjoy kind of organizing these things and everything. And if it's nice a lot... to get a weekly league game in again, and this is a really good way of playing it. Yeah, um, it, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping people appreciate that. Have we got yeah. any filthy, dirty players kicking around like infamous, infamous like horrible star players? Your block uh, mighty blow guy is any... pretty brutal. Uh, yeah, he's been great actually. Oh, my last game though was one of the most embarrassing games I've played. Um, it was against Red October. Very good, very good, and very kind player. But I, um, I think I just must have been so exhausted. I played it last uh, Monday night after I came back from my two day tournament, <laughs> and I was just so exhausted. And I remember I set up. He scored on turn his drive turn six, 
uh, which no, his drive turn seven, which gave me two turns to score. And I just set up. Uh, it was a kick that was really shallow, and my lineman caught it on the line. Um, and then I just didn't move him because I thought it was turn one. And I was there, like, caging him up. And then he messaged me, like, yeah, like, you good? I was like, yeah, yeah, no, this is safe. Oh, oh, can't score now. I didn't move him. He even caught the ball off the kickoff and everything. Oh, it was a like perfect opportunity for turn seven. No. So that happened. I also proceeded to... Uh, on. And so I, I equalised it eventually. Then he had two turns to score. He sent the catch around. I got two dice on the catch with my corn gore. Uh, and it was a roll and a both down. I thought it was a skull, so I clicked... Uh, sorry, it was a sorry, a push and a both down. And I just read it as a skull. So I clicked the push. And uh, I was like... And he was just like, you you should have put both down on... Because he just dodged and scored. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or blitzed and scored. Blitzed them away. And uh, like, you should have kicked both down. And I was just in my mind like... Why did I not do that? Uh, and I'm thinking, I, I, so it, I'm thinking, I either just saw it as a skull, or what was probably more accurate was because I'd just been playing sweaty tournament games for two days straight. I just assumed his catcher was a blodge catcher. Yeah. <laughs> and just like, and just, just like, yeah. oh, well, I'll push him away because it's one extra square of movement. So he had to do a rush. Oh. But it was like, <laughs> I just, yeah. Uh, and like, because I have Juggernaut, it's both down. It's a push either way. I'll click push. To, to, to be fair to you, I think like one of the drawbacks of Fumble is the interface isn't always necessarily like easy to use or it's very yeah. easy to make mistakes because in my last game, I clicked through swarming because I thought it was the kickoff. So <laughs> I didn't get any of my other players out on the pitch. Uh... And then what I did was is I put I put 13 players on the pitch and it said, oh, you've put too many. And so I would, you have to drag them back into the reserve. Um, reserve. And what must have happened was is I dragged one of them and he didn't go into the reserves. He went onto the, uh, onto the touchdown zone. But because he's a small green snotling, he just blends in with the pitch. And it's like saying, oh, that th there's still more. And I was like, oh, I, I must still have more. So then I'm dragging, and then, <laughs> and then he was like, why have you got a snotling in the? Oh, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> there's my deep safety. I was oh. like, yeah. I was like, cool. Don't worry. I guess he's, safe, he's just gonna jump back there. So. Oh, I love he that. He can go back into the game three turns later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, just, uh, I, I may as well just leave him there as defense. <laughs> Oh, That's amazing. No, Milton, it looks so good, and you're doing a cracking job uh, herding the players, um, even though they seem to be herding themselves, which is really, really, really yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, we've been pretty good at that. Participation has been great. And what I will say is, if you're interested in coming and joining us, I, I definitely want to do more of this. Um, so if you're not already in the Discord, come and join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description. Um, we've got a channel talking about Fumble. And I think if there's enough interested players, perhaps, and this round robin structure works kind of for the sort of player count we've got. I think if there's more than 20 next time, I'd divisions. potentially look at doing divisions because I can get fumbled and then manage it itself rather yeah. than me having to worry about it um, and work it out that way. So, the yeah, that might be the way as well, to go. Is you, you get the opportunity to kind of have more winners as well. So this is like mm. the, so you know even if you go with four divisions or something then you can take first and second place from each division take your top eight mm. and then you've got even if even if they get you know out of the first round you'd be like oh, i won the south division uh and it's kind of like a cool thing and, and you know, yeah well the other thing i was also discussing as a possibility was just doing some sort of mini tournaments um Ooh. because you know if we hold a tabletop tournament we're expecting people to come to a place and we'll do it all in a day. Whereas in a digital environment, we could host the same kind of tournament structure in a Swiss tournament format, but you could give the players a week to play each game. So you could have a three week tournament with three games, Swiss style with a bit more, more um, leniency in the time. And what that does do is open it up to international players. And we have been really, really blessed with the international players we've got. Uh, we've got a couple, I think we've got a couple from America, one from Canada, one from, I want to say Finland. Might be wrong there, somewhere that way. 
Um, so the time zones are a bit different, but we've managed to line that up. One thing I have learned, you'll see at the top there on your screen, is it says server time, which is yeah, that's, GMT that's plus, how you organize plus the one. Yeah, I did. I that confused me for ages. I was like, "What are you on about server time? Like the Discord server doesn't have a time." He's like, "No, no, I meant on Fumble." I was like, uh, "Nine o'clock okay. server time." Yeah, that's when we'll play. Okay, cool. That's that's yeah. I'll that's... mention for Discord users, there's um, if you search like Discord timestamps, you can get um, you can create a. It basically gives you like a code. You put in your time, and it or a time, and it gives you a code. You can inject that into Discord. You just copy paste it, and it will display as the local time to whoever's seeing it. Oh, it's very oh, handy. So if you say like oh, I'm at delicious. like, yeah, you, it just looks like a little code like with the closed. Um, mm. What's it called? The brackets. Yeah, I mean Milton. In, in a dream dream world, you could have a <laughs> you could have regionals. Well. Yeah, regionals. <laughs> <laughs> Community all over again. <laughs> Woohoo! That's going from Netflix soon. I'm only I on know. season three. I'm only on season three, but it's been. Yeah, I think it's uh, that's on Amazon now. So thirtieth. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there'd be an argument. Yeah. No. Well, that that would that, that would actually be a thing. Although uh, yeah, that's 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 a tough one. Oh, I, I don't know. Like, it's like, a bit. It's a I, bit unfair to just go, well, you're all in America, so well, you can play I know, each other. I know, but for for potentially like a. A, a, a short league or a tournament or something like yeah. that. Yeah, because it would be really cool yeah. to be like you are the uh, the North American bonehead champion. Mm. You're the European bonehead champion. You're the UK bonehead champion. You're the Pano bonehead champion. Like that would just be really cool. I don't know, but then again, I I, you know me, be. I like to expand the heck out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to dream yeah. big. I've been listening to Arnie's book recently, and now I just keep talking to my daughter and telling her to you know have a vision and stuff with arnie voice uh which i imagine she's completely ignoring so that's fine <laughs> do it now come on it's so good well, she grows up with that accent oh be quite it's so good <laughs> it was so good the best one was when tiff and i went on our first couples holiday and there was this there was this big austrian guy doing um doing aqua gym which was just the absolute highlight of my life. It's the first holiday I'd been on with Tiff. And, you know, you've got only first holiday with your partner and you don't really know what the rules are. Like, right, are we going to get there and she's going to turn into this adventure every day, nine o'clock, let's get on the bus and go somewhere kind of divorce territory or is she going to be chilling, sit by the pool? So I got first day at the pool, reading my adventure book because I'm a grown adult. Uh, and... Um, I was like, right, turn to page 20. And she was like, right, 12 o'clock, do you want a drink? I was like, do we do, we do that? So we had a couple of cocktails. And then this this Austrian dude just wanders over. And it was just the highlight of my life. He was like, you kind of got to do aqua gym, aqua gym, let's go, aqua gym. <laughs> and I was like, this is amazing. So I'd have this, like, had this cocktail, jumped in and doing aqua gym. And he was like, right, you, let's go. Come on, get your hands up. Come on, get the pool noodle. And I was like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> and now whenever Imagine I hear Arnie, in even better. Yeah. Whenever I hear Arnie, it's just like Aqua Gym. And I'm just like, yeah. Oh, so good. Nice. Uh, this is probably why people say I have ADHD, but it's um just, That's so good. Uh, I can see gym. that making you so happy. I can oh. absolutely visualize you in that situation. Oh, so good. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Now I just want to go listen to Austrian Death Machine. Um <laughs> underrated band, by the way. <sighs> is he in it? Oh, I did the the lead singer in Austrian Death Machine just does it in an Arnie voice. The whole band oh, is built around him being Arnie, and most of the lines are lines from his his, his movie. Get to the chopper! Da -da 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 -da. That's amazing. Death Arnie death metal nice. up there with Alestorm as just being genius music. Ah, uh, too oh. true. But anyway, back on topic, Milton, you've done a great job with the inaugural Fumble League. And uh, I think it's been wicked to to see it unfold. And you're only halfway there, which is which is very very cool. And I just it's just wicked to see the chat and the teams develop and the excitement and the abuse and the the shame of Sam with his dwarf team being like, oh, I've got so much money, uh, I might as well just buy a death roller. Um, yeah. You know, if he could loan money, I'm sure he would be uh, just for the sake of it. Like Sam is the ultimate blood bowl landlord. Um, there you go, Ben. You've got a nemesis now. <laughs> okay, I'm really getting a clause out for that one. <laughs> oh, amazing. 
Right, guys, uh, sorry for bouncing off earlier. Is there anything um, you want to touch on before I ask you the final question of the day? No, I think we're good. I don't think so. What's the question? Will we have gnomes? Will we have the gnome rules before the next podcast? We're recording today on the 20th. Thusly, our next podcast will be, what, on the 4th? We record on the 3rd of April. This is where we need trips. Nope. nope, I don't think so. I think they're going to withhold it because there's no announcement at Adepticon. Um, it's quite funny, actually. So I... Uh, I, so I, I do work for C Studios, and um, in the sort of team Slack there, they put a big announcement being just like, "There's news for everyone," but like there's like a big adepticon, just like like there's news for everyone for all gaming systems, and I'm there just like, <laughs> "That is not. There's not something for everyone." <laughs> like... Oh, Milton and I were talking about this before the pod. I was like, "Oh, you know, any any guesses for adepticon?" And Milton was like, "Don't care about any of it." <laughs> Yeah, I was like, hang it's on, like... wait. I, 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 I was like, Adepticon's happening? Oh, right, okay, cool. <laughs> is it 40k? Is it mini 40k? Is it old 40k? Uh, is it Age of Sigmar? Is it Little Age of Sigmar? Is it Little Age of Sigmar with cards? Uh, or is it the old world? Like, which of these armies from 2001 will be released? And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is fair. <laughs> At yeah, least the Necromunda it's... stuff might be cool. Uh, yeah, that could be good. That'd be all right, can it? Um... <laughs> I think we used all Milton's positivity at the beginning when he was talking about um, yeah. <laughs> Jordel's face. Uh... I'm out. Yeah, like, I'm done now. <laughs> Stupid Adepticon. <laughs> Not I'm giving just us glad. things we need. I'm just glad they dropped the team uh, at the Warhammer Day instead of in the middle of the night for Adepticon um, on a personal Oh, yeah. That... Uh, yeah, as for rules, I... <laughs> I'll say yes. Why not? What have we got to lose? I don't have to paint a bunny team. <laughs> We'd have to see it on the pre-order this Sunday. The preview on Sunday. Ready to, to go on pre-order on the 30th. And for Guerrilla Miniatures Games. And, and Sprues and Brews to, to spoil stuff on Saturday the 30th. So we could have a blooming good go over with the rules on the 3rd. Yeah, but you never know. Myself... Oh, sorry. Carry on, Mel. Oh, no, no, you go. Sorry. I was going to say, should I throw myself under the bus by saying on the podcast, like what the plan is of picking up the team and doing a, a painting stream? Because if I announce it, then I have to do it and I can't oh, bail. I didn't know you were going to do I'm, a painting never, stream. That's all we've talked about before, hasn't it? Yeah, I think I'm going to bring back the 24 hour painting stream for a new team release. Oh, so, yes. Absolutely. Gnomes come out. Absolutely. Yes. I won't say a 24 hour stream because I'm going to say until they're done. So it's likely going to be more than that. <laughs> so. I could, um, I could race you. <laughs> yeah. I think that'd okay, be fun. they're primed and agraxed. Uh, glue on some one millimeter flock and we're done. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to say that's that's currently the plan. I'm going to try and do that. Um, sorry to people who have got jobs to do. But <laughs> might delay a day. So, um, so yeah. we've got uh, Monday Night Blood Bowl on the 25th, which is going to be Dungeon Bowl, you versus Trips. Then yes. we've got Monday Night Blood Bowl on the 8th. If Gnomes are out on the sixth, then we could be Monday night blood bowling with the real games workshop team on the eighth. And I would love to try and sneak a, a live match in like we did with vampires as soon as they mm -hmm. drop. Um I mean I've got a I've got a rules I've got a rules. I've printed a team off ready. So if the rules drop before the models, then which I think they're going to. Yeah, we almost always get that. So if you're expecting them to be available or like dropped on the sixth, I I do feel like we have a good chance of having the rules before the next pod. And that is where it gets really juicy because we'll have a new team, some new stars, and that's our. Uh, I'm excited for that, especially because I don't go back to work to the end of uh, April. So <laughs> like, oh, nice. it could be full gnome ahead, and that means we can start working on potentially start filming the Burner Championship um season two because we'll put gnomes in we'll take out the two the uh two ball tiny titans uh we'll get the gnomes cool. in there uh and then we nice. can we can get going which is wicked but for now let's wrap up milton ben it's lovely to have you guys back it's nice to catch up and talk some blood bowl um and uh yeah thank you very much for watching we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy 
I was going to say rumping, but wrestle <laughs> jump up. Happy rump up. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do, as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.